Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so humbled and excited to be here again this year, sharing this moment of inspiration. And I am Pastor Shauna Adams, and Ignite Women's Empowerment Summit has been my must-attend conference for about six years now. And if you know Reverend Nikki Brown, then I don't have to explain why I have to be with her at her conference every November. Praise God. Yeah, uh, please check out my bio to learn more about me and how to connect with me and, and all of that. Because I want to encourage you right now to grab a notebook, to jot some notes down, to grab these nuggets that I'm going to share today from the Lord. And before I begin, please allow me to just lay prayer before us and invite God into our space. Holy God, we thank you today. Lord, we ask that you would just expand our minds, that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, impart to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So Webster's Dictionary defines surge as a sudden, powerful forward or upward movement, especially by a crowd or by a natural force, such as the waves or tide, uh, to rise and fall actively, to rise suddenly to an excessive or abnormal value, to surge suddenly and powerfully forward and upward. So if you're like me, when you got the theme for this year, uh, you just got all excited. It's the surge. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I'm ready. I'm ready for the surge. Take me, God. I'm ready to go higher. I'm ready to go up, God. It's my turn. I'm next in line. I want new dimensions. I want new levels. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for ministry. I'm ready to shine. And I've been waiting my turn and my haters been holding me back. And Lord, surge in my life. And I can't say that I blame you. Uh, that matches the Collins English Dictionary definition, which is sudden large increase in something that has previously been steady or has only increased and developed slowly. So I don't know about anybody else that's watching today, but when you feel that your development and increase has only been slowly, who wouldn't be ready for a surge, right? Uh, when it seems that you're in stagnant waters or that you're just treading water, it is natural to get excited about a surge. But this morning, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, and I'm going to shake up your world just a little bit, right? Uh, when you experience a surge, there is one common element in all of those definitions that I said, and that is the word suddenly. Yeah, the surge comes suddenly. No warning and no heads up. You know, everything is working fine and operating as it should. There's no concerns, there's no issues, and then out of nowhere, here comes the surge. And now there is a problem. See, y'all ain't gonna be ready for this this morning. And can I share one more definition of surge? As it pertains to electricity, an electrical surge is defined as a sudden rise in current or voltage in an electrical circuit. So let me say it again because this is really where we're going to lay our platform and do our heavy lifting on this morning. An electrical surge is a sudden rise of current or voltage in an electrical circuit. And so the key to surviving an electrical surge is having surge protection. Uh, while we are saying, Lord, take me higher, I've come today with a warning that if you have not prepared yourself for the surge, it might not work out for you like you think it should. Yes, if you're not aware of the potential pitfalls of a surge, you might not make it to the heights that you dreamed about. Uh, I know somebody just fell out the car, but come on, get back in the car. We're going to ride together. Everybody's going to get to the destination. See, my assignment today is to prepare you and equip you for the surge. So I'm just going to give us three keys to surge protection. So here's key number one. Beware of being just a power strip. Write that down. Beware of being just a power strip. It's very easy to think that a power strip and a surge protector are the same thing and that they have the same uh, capability, purpose, and effect. However, they are not the same things. And so forgive me if I get simple in my explanation, but this is how the Holy Ghost told me to do it. He told me to make it plain this morning. A power strip is a long electrical cable that plugs into a power outlet in the wall. So within the power strip, there are extra outlets to allow you to plug things into it, making the power strip now the main power source of all those other devices that you plugged into it. And so you can kind of describe it as an extension cord 2.0. 
The deceiving thing about power strips is that since it has multiple outlets, we think that it turns your wall outlet into an infinite source of power. So if the power outlet has five outlets and we plug something into each and every one of those outlets, we think we have all this extra power supply at our disposal. But the truth is that no matter how many outlets a power strip has, it can only handle the maximum wattage of the wall outlet that it is plugged into come on here so when we overload the power strip with too much wattage and then we turn on the hairdryer that's when we create a power surge and suddenly everything shuts down the power strip is now overheated and now we have just short-circuited everything and now all we're left with is burnout so I could stop right here and just ask you to lift your hands right where you are and I could call altar call and call deliverance from the power strip anointing. Uh, too many times we think that going higher means doing more, doing more for people, doing more for the church, uh, doing more for your boss, uh, doing more, just doing, doing, being busy. And then the only thing that happens is one more thing takes us right over the edge and then we suddenly burn out. Uh, can somebody be honest today because we have allowed ourselves to be a power strip we have let people continually plug themselves into us sucking our anointing and our energy and our time and then when the power surge comes we don't have enough power to hold it all together uh, we can serve on 5,000 ministries thinking that it makes us a good Christian but when suddenly hits you, you short circuit because you got all your outlets plugged up. Your child gets sick, suddenly surge. Your marriage takes a hit, there's a sudden surge. You lose your job, there's a sudden surge. COVID-19 shuts down the business, sudden surge. And can I go a little deeper right now? A power surge is when your supply of electricity is interrupted. Uh, devices rely on a steady stream of electricity at all times. So any kind of disruption of the current of electricity can cause the devices to fry, to melt, and to malfunction. And so this is why you can't serve on every ministry and also give proper attention to your connection to the Father. Uh, you can't go to every meeting and not see some things in your life begin to melt you can't do everything for the church and not serve your husband and your children and think that God is going to honor that no you can't go to every conference and neglect allowing God to have and hold a conference with you see this is why we see so many well-intentioned people short circuit and burn out their minds begin to fry, their faith begins to melt, and their lives begin to malfunction. So don't be a power strip for everybody and everything. Don't overload yourself thinking that the more that you do, the more that you're actually doing. And now what you've done is you've neglected the being. What happened to that? It's not as important to God about what you're doing as it is about who you are, true to the core. Yeah, anybody ever find out ever said to yourself I don't even know who I am anymore you got caught up so much in the doing that you lost yourself yeah we got caught up in people pleasing and not self honoring we got caught up in selfish ambition and not divine destiny we found out the hard way that we were power strips and not surge protectors come on somebody key number one don't be just a power strip See, here's key number two. Key number two is check your grounding. When there is a power surge, proper grounding makes all the difference. If you are like me, I had no clue what grounding truly was, so I had to go out there and do my research. So praise God, I did the research for you, okay? So grounding provides an escape route. Remember that, grounding provides an escape route for excess electricity to go to the ground. So if the grounding is faulty, then the electricity has no other place to go, thus overpowering and overheating all the devices. And that's when you have fires and explosions. So power strips do not have grounding at all, but surge protectors do. So here is my question. Could it be 
that your life has been on fire because you have faulty grounding. I'm going to ask it again. Could it be that your life is on fire because you have faulty, false, improper, wrong grounding? Now, I know that was a gut punch, so breathe right now and, and, and take a moment, okay? Yeah, in order to survive the surge in our lives, we must be properly grounded. Grounded in something outside of ourselves. Some say higher power, other power. But as for me, I boldly declare that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand all other ground is sinking sand or should i say it this way all of the grounding is sinking sand i don't know where you're standing that's really none of my business i'm just here to tell you that you better make sure that you're standing on good grounding standing on your gift is not good grounding standing on your hair weave your lashes your hips and your heels is not good grounding standing on your talents and your money is not good grounding standing on your degree and your title is not good grounding standing on your leader your boss and even your pastor is not good grounding a man can't do it a woman can't hold it because when the surge comes all of that all of it is sinking sand as for me when the surge comes suddenly remember I go to the one that can suddenly save I go to the one that can suddenly heal that can suddenly deliver that can suddenly set free that can suddenly move yes I, I go to God who sold a surge before the beginning of time and has already provided my escape route mm -hmm. so you better check your grounding you better check your grounding it, it better be able to handle your sudden surge it better be able to maintain the pressure and redirect the excess electricity when you need it and that's why you cannot be a power strip because when the surge hits a power strip you can't redirect the excess electricity into all those 5,000 ministries that you serve on yeah you can't send that excess electricity to all those people that are leaning on you and pulling on you and dragging on you see you need some real true grounding you really need some a place for a true escape and can I really just help us this morning? Let me be clear about the type of escape that we need. Some people use drugs and alcohol and ministry and work and people and sex and other things as an escape from their surge. But I come to tell you that these are not escapes. These are holes. See, the only way out of a hole is to go back the same way that you came. That is not an escape and that is not grounding you need an escape an escape takes you on an alternate path it, it takes you away from the pressure source it, it reroutes your anxiety it redirects your focus it demolishes your depression so if you're taking your notes you need to write this down check my grounding is it a hole or is it an escape hallelujah come on here see I just want to give you one final thing before you sign off and you go to all your other workshops today and I, I pray that you enjoy yourself uh, you need to evaluate the type of device that you have plugged into your surge protector see everything has a set amount of wattage that it requires in order for it to work properly a phone charger does not require as much wattage as a hair dryer and a clothes dryer does not requires more wattage than a hair dryer so it's important to know how much wattage a surge protector can handle and then you start plugging in accordingly so here is my final question for you today do you have too much wattage plugged into your outlets it's not just about filling up the outlets but it's also about being selective about the things that you choose to put in them
I'll say it again. It's not just about filling up the outlets, but it's also about being selective about the actual things that you choose to plug into them. And so can I tell someone today that it's time to check your outlets? This is key number three. Check your outlets because something has to get unplugged. Uh, what or who is plugged into you? Where is the drag? Where is the pull? Or what is causing you to keep short circuiting? What is causing you to keep shorting out? What is disrupting the flow? What is flipping the switch? What is tripping the circuit breaker? Uh, Anybody else uh, like me ever have a surge protector that has that one outlet that's black and burnt out and so you just skip over that one, you just don't use that one, you know, because something has happened in that outlet, something in there had too much wattage, see, and that's the remnants of that relationship that you should have never been in, hallelujah, glory to God, that's the remnants of that uh, uh, partnership that you went into without doing all your research and without consulting God, that is indicative of that last ministry that you you said yes to and it took you over the edge because it required more of you than you had the capacity to give and now you have been burned in that area and so you just keep skipping over it now you just declare that you ain't gonna go there no more now you keep telling yourself I just ain't gonna date men I'm over me I ain't gonna go to the church I ain't gonna sing on the choir no I ain't gonna talk to that person no more because you had the wrong thing plugged into your outlet it was too much why did you require too much from you you should have unplugged it a long time ago. Uh, because you don't unplug it before the surge, you're at risk of an electrical fire. Uh, you're at risk of a burnout. You're at risk of a meltdown. You're at risk of a psychotic break in your mind. And when fire breaks out, you can't control the devastation. See, fire is elusive. Uh, fire is unruly. Fire is all-consuming. Yeah, so the fire might start with overload in one outlet, but it can expand into your family. It could expand into your marriage, your call, your legacy, your lineage, your faith. These are all the things that should be receiving our energy, our time, and our focus. These are the things that are most valuable. These are the things that should be plugged into our outlets. These are the things that we need to protect. But because we didn't honor the divine maximum for our lives, we short circuit. Because we weren't intentional about our outlets, one surge brought the entire house down to its knees. So evaluate what and who you're connected to and what and who is connected to you. If it's taking too much energy and not giving any in return, unplug it. If it drains you every time you encounter it, unplug it. If it doesn't serve you and help you to be the best you, unplug it. And so I double dog dare you right now in the next month to evaluate all your outlets, find out what really should be there? What is it that makes you so tired that you can't function when you come home? You can't give your best to your family. You can't serve like you want to because you're in too many ministries. Evaluate your outlets. Something needs to be unplugged. That's all I came here to tell you this morning to get you started real good and to get you pondering, get you ready for the surge, right? We need surge protection. Uh, these three powerful keys to get you ready. Not only for the surge, but how to maintain through it. Number one, be, beware of being just a power strip. Number two, check your grounding. And number three, check your outlets because something has got to be unplugged. I pray that you were blessed and inspired by this word this morning. It has been my humble privilege to share and be here with you today. I'm Pastor Shauna Adams. Enjoy the rest of the conference. God bless you.